Oh, there you are. <laughs> I didn't have anything on my chat screen. Sorry, guys. This came up. Hey, everybody. Good to see you all. Jean, Eileen, Kmore. Dot, Norma, Sharon, CB, I think CB's here, Carol, Janet, so far so good, you can hear and see me okay. Awesome. So I'm just taking um, Jean's spot temporarily until she wants to come back. Or even if Jean, even if you want to come back maybe one time a month or whatever, um, I'm just here to replace you. So it's your spot. So whenever you want to come back on when you're feeling you want to do something, don't feel bad. Just come on. <laughs> Oh, hi, Kathy. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, that's good. Whatever's good for you. I'm just um, keeping the fibs happy when people want to have a break. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'll be your temporary replacement. <laughs> I'm a temp girl. I think I'll stay at four. You may have to go need to get in. You'll be able to talk. Oh, okay. Thanks, Vicky. Yeah, no problem. So I'm happy to do it. Gets me going again. You know, winter, you kind of get, well, here in Canada anyway, <laughs> you get storm stayed so much, you kind of get in a, a couch potato mode, basically. Don't feel like doing anything.
So I I um I was cleaning out one of my boxes and <laughs> found more of my books. So I thought I might show a couple more of those and then um whose turn is it for the fibs sketch a day to put the uh, prompts down? Do you know Janet or Eileen? <laughs> yep. Get ready, Janet. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> How convenient. No problem. Oh, Jen's going to stream tonight? Awesome. <laughs> so, I just had that out. I might do a sketch today. Um, maybe for tomorrow. <laughs> and I did get to be able to drive to my work to get my supplies. Thank the Lord. Oh, finally. It was clear all the way. And then uh, <laughs> yesterday, oh, was there was a big alert warning for across the whole southern part of Ontario. The freezing rain was supposed to start. So I had to quickly get there and then come back within a certain amount of time. So... <laughs> That was fun, but I got back just before. We didn't really get any, so there you go again. Weather, they can't tell the, what's going to happen, really. So, let's see what I had here. A, look. A whole bunch of books. I think I showed you all those. And I was looking at for watercolor stuff. And Chloe's down here with me because she's scared. The ice is falling off the roof and making <laughs> a thunder noise, which she doesn't like. But she's pretty... <laughs> She's trying to hide under my desk. Let's see. Um, oh, I did get this. Uh, this is an old one. This is a really good one. Comes with a DVD of 40 Lessons. And uh, Bridget O'Connor, awesome watercolorist, if you like watercolor. Yeah. She's, she's kind of a scaredy dog. <laughs> Instead of a scaredy cat, she's a scaredy dog. But she does beautiful, huge watercolors. And I love her blending. This is another one that I think Shauna could probably do. Because um, Shauna is very good at blending. But, uh, yeah. Gives you some really awesome... Um, again, the brushes and the typical thing that you see in watercolor books. Um, but it's nice because she gives the, oh, look at that poppy. That is gorgeous. I love poppies. Oh, have, you, have you wanted this one, um, Jean? Have you t taken any of her lessons? So she's um, each, I find each artist, you know, has a different technique, has a different way of doing things. So it's kind of nice to uh, try them 
and one thing may work more for you than another the way another artist does things um there take advantage of blooming i believe she is on or is not, yes she is yeah i think this is where i got the book i really like her work she does rocks really well um she's uh, i would say mostly florals she likes to do like look at that that is so gorgeous whites so you know even though it's a white flower and you recognize it as a white flower there really isn't much white in it they're all mauves and grays But it's a, it's a great book for learning. Um, it's all step by step, plus a video. So it's well worth the price. I can't remember what I paid for this. Um, 29 US, 35 Canadian. Um, probably get it secondhand, I would imagine, because it's an older book. Let's see. It was from. Hmm. Teaching watercolor. It's the UK. Distributed in the UK. Distributing in Canada and Australia. I don't see a. Oh, 2009. So, yeah, you should be able to get it secondhand, I would imagine. But all the techniques, it's a great book, Skies, Masking Fluid. She actually even uses um, stuff like lace, um, leaves, that type of thing, prints with them on her um, watercolor paper, salts. Cling wrap, negative painting, scratching, sanding, and scoring, staining, marbling. Like, look at there's another type of pop. I think that's a poppy too. Yeah, it's so pretty. Uh. If I have to watch another person swatch colors, I might have to scream. <laughs> Don't worry, Dot, I'm not swatching. I'm not a swatcher. I should swatch, but I I don't know. I just it's not my thing. I do it if I absolutely have to. <laughs> For some reason it's just not I like to get it right in down into the art aspect of it, I guess. I get excited about what I can make. Trees. Different different stuff. It's a great book. And then you get a, your DVD. And it's 70 minutes, I believe. I think it's just one. Yeah, just one. And then, uh, yeah, Northern Light Books. Exploring textures in watercolor. Hmm. I'll have to look at that one. Painting approach. Yeah, so just thought I'd show you that one. And then you've seen this one. Many people have this one. I love her work. The um how she just details certain parts of her paintings i love that look especially in animals or florals so it's a suggestion of what it is and your mind will finish the rest but i love that like that looks so cool 
You, well, that doesn't surprise me, Eileen. Of course you have both of them. <laughs> You've probably got ones that we don't even have. That's what I'm guessing. Here's another way of doing um, poppies. Look at that. That's really cool. I like that. Again, a suggestion, but you know it's a poppy. Tomatoes. Well, she gives you uh, step by steps too in this book. But I like that. See, there's some blooming in there, but it, it's beautiful. That's my trouble. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Aline. <laughs> Look at that fish. That's so awesome. And then she just makes sure she has the eye in it and you recognize it then. I really love this type of work. And that's the problem with me. I like too many different types <laughs> of styles. So I want to try them all. Aw, look, it looks like Jean's cat. Yeah, so awesome book. I like her work. Um, is this the one we saw last time? I think this is a different one. Yeah, this is a different one. Watercolor making your mark. Explore 55 step-by-step -step painting techniques. And I don't think this one has a DVD. Oh, this is, was this the same? No, this is different. I don't remember these. Uh, yeah, this is different. A little bit of a more uh, abstract, I would say. Different uh, things to use. She gets into abstracts. Like, I like that. I think that's cool. Or when she makes the uh, squares out an area and makes it a different color. I like that. Look at that, the shadows, that's beautiful. Splotches though, Jean, that splotches there. <laughs> Butterflies. And she actually uses um, in her more abstract ones like these she actually does use pencil crayon to sketch out certain things so she wants it to show through her uh, watercolor I think that looks cool so you can actually see the lines that she's made here you don't have you don't have this one that's shocking <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you're getting the oxide sprays. I wonder if you could use the oxide sprays and watercolor together. There she uses the stencils. Oh, there. I got one for you. Janet. You can do watercolor and then use your stencils to do oxides over top of it. <laughs> we'll find next time. <laughs> I think that would be cool. We got to try that, I, um, Janet. I 
I think that would be awesome. Here she's putting um, bits of pieces of uh, papers and then using the watercolor to finish. That's cool. She, again, she uses some uh, sprays. See, they're a little more abstract, but I like them. I like how she's used both collage and watercolor. It's neat. There's that rose again. I think that's the same one in the other book. There's poppies. Oh, look at that iris. Ooh. I got one that color in the garden. Can't wait to see it in the spring. Look at those. Oh, that's nice. I love geraniums, too. See how she does the uh, square areas? I like that. So that's negative painting, basically, what she's done here. It's another way of doing negative painting. There's another one for morning glories. Cosmos. It's neat. I like how she's done the stencils in the background. I really like that. The book. Watercolor. Making your mark. Another good book, guys. Sorry, but I can't keep it to myself. <laughs> I gotta let you know. It's too good to be true. Oh, look at this. Look at that. I gotta try some of these. See, and they she's given step by steps. The roses. There's the negative painting. Step by step. Hollyhocks. I like hollyhocks too. I like every flower, let's face it. Oh, look at this. So she used paper collage for the shapes of the stones, and then she used um, paint to give them dimension. That's cool. Huh. Yes, there's a video, I think, that you can get on this. Oh, what's this? Using powdered charcoal. I've got some of that. That's cool. A little more abstract, I would say, but it's a great book. Another another good one to get for your library, guys. Just it gives you um, ideas and inspiration, and then of course I love this guy, Joe Dodens or Dowdens. He is a fantastic watercolorist. Um, Gene, I think you have one or two of his, his books. Didn't you just do this one here? I think you did. This is a really good book. And he's got videos you can watch too on um, Artist Channel. I don't know. 
Yeah, Eileen, they're my abstract in that book. It's a little different than your traditional watercolor. It's nice. Eileen and Linda did this one. Oh, yeah. So uh, it, from this book, have you seen this book? I love his stuff. And when you watch him on a video, he makes it look so simple. The way he does it is very simple. But he does everything, composition, uh, mixing grays, perspective, painting water. There it gives you a step-by-step -step for painting water. So this is a good book, too, because it's all step-by-step -step and very detailed in the instructions. From this book? Cool. So this is a really good book. Look at doing a person, little kids. And very good. Look at uh, 42, 51. Yeah, 51 step-outs. Step by steps on this one. So this is really a lovely book. They're all very, very uh, the steps out are, are really amazing. So he does quite a few different types of stuff too, like landscapes, um, Water, people, buildings, nature, sailboat. So, excellent book. Another one for you. Good for step outs. And then, uh, well, you remember, <laughs> okay, Janet. <laughs> You liked that Claudia Nice book that you just got, the pen and ink one? <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Down by the Sea by Claudia Nice. I forgot I had this one. Again, your typical beginning color wheels. Oh, painting the sea. Again, gives you step by steps on this one. And she actually gives you the colors you'll need for doing the sea and sand and sky. So for each one of these is this color this color chart. Working with watercolor glazes. Like, look at that. That's beautiful. So you're by the water, so you need this one. I think there's more step by steps in this one, it looks like telling you how to go about doing it. And she tells you the colors, which is nice. If you want all of them. See oh there, she's doing the pen work into it too. Sandy beaches, grasses, mixing sand colors. Oh, this is a really good book because she gives you all the colors you need to use. So this is really good. This is a good book, Janet. <laughs> Painting sand close up. Oh, 
Well, and in any of these, Janet, you can put pen in it. You don't have to just leave it the watercolor. You can put pen in anything, really. Beach figures, how to draw them. I need hair. You need, I need hand can do what my eyes is. Not sure what you mean there. Sea bluffs and rocky coastlines. I forgot I had this one. I'm glad I looked through that box. People. Skin, ah, skin tones even. That's good. Rocks. This is a really good book. There you go. Pen work again. <clears throat> and the coats. So you can use pen in anything. I love that dog. Sandcastle. She's used pen work again in the sandcastle. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the chart for skin tones is great. So I want to get doing that. Do people. Old boats. Shorelines. It's a good book. So I would imagine that any of the books that she has out would be awesome. I think I think that these are the only two I have. This is the one we had before. Mixing colors for tropical seas. This is good for mixing. She has one on trees and nature too that I would like. And there she shows you how to do the um, the rock from step to step. And then then the sky and the sand. There's the sunset. She did it. Yeah, so I thought I'd show you that one. There, I want this one. Landscapes, creating textured landscapes, I think would be good. That's with pen and ink, too. That. Um, what else? See what else I found here. Oh yes, Terry Harrison is also another one, good one I like, and he's got a lot of really nice techniques of doing things. I've watched a lot of his uh, videos. He uses like stipplers and stuff like that for trees and water. And um, he's got step by steps too in this book. Different tools that he uses. He uses some pen work too.
this is I think this is the guy that has the um, his own brushes and it, this fan brush that he has he does amazing stuff with this and I did buy that can't remember what he called it Van Gogh brush he calls it a fan go instead of Van Gogh it's fan go but it is a really nice brush he's got a couple of them that he uses and it does make a difference than your regular um, fan brush winter he's not as detailed as um the other guy what was his name joe Doden Dowden. but this would be um really great for journals journaling because it's it's a little faster than the other guy like here Different ways to do trees using uh, their the fan fan go brush to use the widow willow or painting ivy on a tree even the uh, bark that yeah I remember him doing this so it looks like bark I think that's cool. Hey, CB, I'm just sharing my love of things. <laughs> There's how he does the uh, birch trees. So swiping sideways. Some books I like, some books I don't. This, this guy I really like. Got some really good ideas on how to do stuff. There's another one of the rocks who did the same way as that bark. And I think that's so neat. <laughs> and I'm forcing you to press that button to buy. Do you? I'm just showing you so you have a good idea. So you're not wasting your money. Okay, I won't show you any more then. <laughs> I do have more, but I won't show you any more. Um, Let's see. Let me put my book. So, since I'm the next prompts, um, let's see. My erasers. But I'll do it in the uh, find my pencil here. And there's my eraser. Somewhere in my this one. This one will do. All right. Oh, 
man, my pen. So this is, remember the sharpener that Janet was showing you for sharpening these leads? This is the little one that you can buy at any art store will carry them. Is that your sketch? Yeah, this is my sketch a day book. It's just cheap paper, nothing. Did I just break it? Nothing crazy. Nice and sharp. I think I broke it. Maybe not. Yeah, I did. Yeah, good yet. Just gonna find my pictures that I did. Let's see. Okay. So because we're for three weeks now <laughs> on every Wednesday, we've had an ice storm. <laughs> that's what I'm going to draw ice. <laughs> so that's uh, tomorrow's prompt ice. Write it down. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a A huge ice cube. And these are pretty well whatever you want because there's no wrong way of doing them. Because every ice cube's different. I'll bring you down. Get my camera thing. That's it, I guess. All right, so I'm going to use my, this is what I've been using in this book pretty much the whole time, is uh, the Neo 2s. And I've stuck to only the 10 colors. So if I want to make a color, I combine it these to make whatever color I want. They're a little trickier than using watercolor because once, and especially on this paper, once they're down, they're pretty much down for good. So you kind of have to watch your, the amount of water that you put with it. Um, where's my... And then I usually, um, and sometimes I do my pen work before, sometimes I do it after. Um, if you're going to do it before, you have to have um, a waterproof pen. I'm just going to clean this off because I'm going to use mostly blues today. So, I think, as you can see, 
there's a lot of this was a blue sky behind it so we I'm going to try and find the darkest colors first um, and put it along this one's, well, both sides of the icicles. Trying to keep the, well, actually, I don't have to keep the white because I'll use the uh, Sharpie marker. All righty. And I usually use a one of these water brushes. Put some more water in it. And I like this one. This is actually a Ben Fang water brush. I can't remember if there was ink in this before or not. I do have their watercolors that are in the brushes but um i think this might have been just an empty one but it seems to be not as wet i did buy some of the jane davenport ones but they're too wet they let out too much water for me it'd be good for washes i guess in the background but so it's going to be kind of a um, a blue and then I'm going to put some black on here. This brown isn't the greatest brown, but just add some water, a little bit of black to it. And then you get a nice dark, dark, kind of a slate color. So we can just go down. So they're, they're um, I'm not going to go down the whole thing because I can use my um, pens to do a lot of this work. So it'll be a little bit in here, here. As you can see, it holds a lot of color for a long time. That's why I like them. And you can make them light or dark by just adding some water. So they last forever. Then just water it down. Just squeeze some more water out. If you want a lighter mix of what you just mixed, just add some more water to it. So just roughly sketchy kind of look to it. It doesn't take long to do these, um, well, especially this one. It's not much detail to it. Okay, and then I can do more of a blue. 
with a lot of water to it. Squeezing stuff out. And just do some sky around it. My Ben saying watercolor came with an empty brush, looks like. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, it probably was. It's been a while since I've used them. I don't even remember when I bought them. It was in the other house, that's for sure. But I do like the, uh, the brush because it doesn't uh, let out a lot of water. And you can actually dry brush with it, too. There, so far. And then I think I have a little bit more in between color. Let's test it. Maybe a little more water. Just here and there, just a little bit of a difference. Seems to have more. It's kind of sketchy looking. Like I said, there's no going wrong with <laughs> icicles. Just make sure you leave the um, Highlight on one side. Okay, let me dry that. Which blue? Cobalt blue, Joyce. Cobalt. And a little black. And I just basically dry it so it doesn't go through the page because if you keep wet 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 it will eventually seep through the other page but this um journal's been pretty good actually okay so then take my pen and let's see if i can find my black sharpie And I like these. I like this really fine, the Pilot Tex C4. I really like these. Yeah, these are the basic set, Joycey, the set of 10. So it would be probably your main color that would be in most sets. Uh, well, watercolor is, they both work differently, as you probably know, Vicki. Um, the Neo 2s 
probably won't move as much on watercolor paper as a regular stick of Daniel Smith's um, watercolor. So I would say the, the watercolor, if you want more of that traditional movement with watercolor, I'd use watercolor. The nao 2s once you kind of put them down there, they're pretty hard to move. So you basically have to decide how you how you want your color to be as far as um, transparency from your water before you put it on the page. There's no change in it because you can't lift this at all. And you know, I, I would imagine you would know that. Watercolor sticks, not regular water. Yeah, well, the watercolor sticks are watercolor. They don't have a binder like they do um, these Neos. Neos have wax in them, whereas the watercolor sticks don't. So they would move a little more than your, your Neo, Neo 2s, definitely. And I would imagine you would be able to lift from those sticks if you wanted to. Yeah, this is a Pilot G Tech C4. I don't know if you can see that. So it's like a point. Is it point four or point three? Something like that. It's fine. But these I find are pretty much waterproof too. They're not bad. Um, and they dry really fast. Now they move a bit, but not much. Probably once they're dry, dry. So if you want a really fine line, um, and I'll just where the the um, Shadow basically um, is the darkest. That's where I'll put some of this down. Yeah, and it's, I like doing kind of um, scratchy. Depends on the <laughs> what you're drawing too. Um, But it looks a little um, more realistic if you kind of do a, miss, a scratch and or Morse code type of thing. Now you could use blue on this too. Blue point, ballpoint pen would do. Hey, Vaughn. And then there's also little squiggles that you can do that you know how you have ribs in the in the um, ice, so you can do that kind of thing, little scribblies to um, show that there's waves or ripples in the in the glass. Texture, a look of texture. I 
So you just look at your um, reference and you'll see what kind of texture is existing on it. And you kind of, uh, draw it out in some way that it looks realistic to you, it gives that feeling of texture. I think I need to add some more shading to this one. So I kind of just bounce around, <laughs> basically. Okay. You like DS Prime Tech? You have to show me, Vicki, your um, assortment of watercolor sticks. Here. See? Just scratchy. Then this is part of the ink trough, so let's do that a little bit of uh, gray. Add some more water to it and here. It actually has mold <laughs> if you can see that. See the mold there? So you can put that in or not. I'm going to. So you could just get some. You could either do it with your pen or make a bunch of dots with your. More concentrated on the edge. And then you just take your. And then you can add more. You can do it from the stick or not. Depends how much concentration of color you want. There. So after that's done, let's try it again. Guys, 
it's uh, funny with the um, Neo 2s, you kind of have to work a little bit faster because they dry so fast. And they're, they're there. <laughs> the water color, you can move it. You can't with it. Then you can take your, I just use these Sharpie paint markers, the water ones. You just have to make sure you um, shake them before you use them. And then you can add to your highlights. And I can go back and put more shadows in if I want, which I could. See, there's quite a bit of um, shadow there down along here. But you can see where the highlights are right there and there, a little bit down the center here. So I could actually, actually, I think I will I'll put some more water um, color in. It's darker here. Doesn't matter if there's pen. This one can be a lot more. more black right in here. Quite a bit there. Okay, let that dry a little bit. Um, in the sketch a day? Mm, no. Well, I always sketch it out first with um a pencil. And sometimes I use a ink first, sometimes I don't. Depends on what I'm doing, I guess. Um I can go through some of them and tell you. What which I did first in some of them. Okay, let's put some and there's like little dots and, and lines going back and forth in here. Um, dots and dashes. A big highlight here, a few little dots. Um, 
then there's a highlight just a smidgen now you can also use your um, this paint marker say you did too much dark and you wanted to lighten it you could actually take this and um, color over top of it after it's dry. Okay, these are not quite it's a lot there. Maybe there. Also here. Not as many on this one. Some on the other side. You can always add a few more, whether they're there or not, just to give it a little more interest. Sometimes it looks better if you do. There. So it's just. A little bit of that's two colors and some pen and white. And then you can put something on it, like, um, so the word will be ice. Now you could just. Um, have it up here, or you could have it going along there. Depends how you want to do your writing, or you don't have to do writing. Sometimes it looks nice, though. I'll show you. Um, like, here, the boot. Kathy, this is one I did um, the inking last. So I did all of my colors first, and then I did my inking on top. Um, this one I did, this has very little ink on it. I think the only ink is around the eyes. Um, I used white marker for the fur and graphite for the gray areas. And then this is um, this is Neo 2s in different color yellows and oranges. Yeah, whatever you're in the mood. There's no really law. <laughs> um, this I also did. See, there's very little pen work in the really soft areas of the whipped cream because I felt that the ink would be too dark and it would wouldn't give you that softness of look to it so i didn't put any ink in there same with um very little ink in the leaves um let's see i put strawberry leaves walnut leaf my potato man <laughs> um this one I felt that the leaves were too green. So what I did is I got the uh, white Neo 2 and colored in between the vines. And that's what gave that look. Um, this one I'm not happy with. I just, for some reason, I couldn't get into that one. I like the fish. The fish is... Um, it was all done in the watercolor or Neo 2s, and then I used um, a white gel pen for the highlights and the bubbles, and then a blue pen to do the uh, the line work in the in the bubbles, and then the line work in the fins here and there. This is done with um. Oh, what are they called? 
the graph ink fine liner is an 01. And that's a little less in your face than the black. So it's nice to use the sepia color. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Um, orchids, too. Uh, very little line work, but just a touch. And it was in the sepia color. Same with the pastry is in the sepia color. So sometimes the black doesn't work. You need the, a lighter color. And the sepia seems to do it. Or, or you could actually use green, say, a nice fine line of green in it. And these are all with the uh, Neo 2s. Um, that was the Neo 2. There's a lot more line work in that. Um, that's just graphite. Didn't do any line work in that one. Um, that's all graphite. The, the thing with graphite is you have to have, you still have to have contrast. Very important for graphite if you want to do graphite. So if you're just using one, um, like your, what's an H or um, what is it? an H3 or, you know, you have to get different um, hardness of your pencils. So if you get a soft one, I would say about a uh, four is a good one. Do you do you erase or contrast or paint? But to these, no, there's no paint or anything on these. There's it's just um, graphite. So. The say this one here. Um, I, I do a lot of smudging to give the background color, like this the eyebrow here. So I smudged out the eyebrow and then I go in with a darker graphite. So, um, a softer graphite that gives you um, a really dark line. You can you could use um, to the black. Um, Prismacolor pencil if you wanted to, as long as you know you can't erase it. Um, and make sure it's really, really good and sharp when you're doing your eyebrows. And that gives you um, the, the difference. Same with the hand here. Um, there's a lot of really dark, dark graphite there. So give it's better look. What about the whites of the eyes? The whites of the eyes? No, those were all um, the paper. Now, if you want, you could use um, your paint marker if you wanted to. If um, say if you colored it all in, sure. Use. There's nothing saying you can't use it. Just whatever's easier for you. When I drew it, I just made the shape so I knew I didn't I wouldn't uh, color inside that and the hand um, that's just um, a lot of smudging um, to make the wrinkles that's just scratching in here where you see the wrinkles and stuff Um, what else? Let's see. Anyway. Jellyfish was, there's no black in there. That's all 
neos and then white paint marker. And see, I bled through my ear. <laughs> Got a, something there. For the white strands of the hair, I just use the white marker. Very little pen work in this, mostly just paint. Oh, you're welcome. This is like, yeah, you have to start doing it in, in able to, you will see things as you progress, what looks right and what doesn't look right. Um, yeah, this funny guy here, he's uh, mostly pen work and white. So you just have to play. Like, I'll show you the difference um, of how far I've come. Like, I haven't done this for such a long time. So, see, this tree here. See how all the outside lines are drawn in. So you don't need to do all the outside lines like that. See, not all the outside lines are drawn. Depends. You get to learn this as you as you go along. Same with this one. See all the lines around the edge of it are drawn. It would have looked better if I had a mist, like say in the leg here. You didn't need to do all the outside lines. You like the bunny um, jean? Uh, this was all um, the uh, sepia ink too. It looked better with the red. So you can get different inks and actually where did I put that I got these at Costco's when I was in into the city and um, there was another artist book that I have and this is what she uses for over top of her um, um, watercolors this is the dip because there's such a fine fine um, point to them they're point three. And I got these for uh, 19 bucks, so that was a pretty good price for 20. So I'll be trying those. Guess are those like stabilos? Um, I'm not sure if they are Vaughn. Um, they could be, because I know the Stabilos are, I think I have some Stabilos, if I'm correct, I might. I'll have to look, I probably have some, and I'll test them out and when I find them. Same type of tip? Yeah. And I think these, no, I don't think they're waterproof. Hmm. Water-based assorted ink. I think your Stabilos are waterproof. If I remember correctly. I would love to get a, the, the Copic fine liners. I love those. And I have a full set of the fine liners. And do you think I can find them? I know they're here because I remember seeing them thinking, oh, that's where they are. Now I don't know where they are again. <laughs> Got to find them. I love those things. Oh, are they? They're water soluble too. I'll have to test these because... There's one artist that I'm pretty sure it was these she was using because they she could use them in the um, with water that they wouldn't run on her. Oh, 
let's just test this out. May as well, while I'm here. Okay, how's this open? There we go. Cool. Let's do Stuart Brown here. They have really nice, nice fine line. Let's heat it, heat set it. Yeah, Debbie, exactly. I would love to have a pit set of um, fine liners. They need to get on that. Yeah, see, this one moves. Does move. Not a lot, but it does move. So I would, they, they're they still great for doing after your watercolor. Because I love the fine, that's why I got them, is because they had the fine nib. And their fine liners are hard to find in color for some reason in Canada. You can get all kinds of black, blue, and sepia, but you can't find any other color. Okay, Vicki, thanks for coming. They have a black set in various tips. Yeah, I've seen those. Um, but I want color. Like you said, they need color. Um, the only other thing that I could do is, is get the, um, I haven't got them, surprisingly, is the uh, Doc Martens Indian ink and just use a dip pen. Thanks, Vicki. Jean, my are not stable. There are there are a few out there that. Well, well, like I said, you can get the Copic fine liners, but they're very hard to find here for some reason. Go on Amazon, and they want. $15 for one and I'm not paying $15 for a pen and those are the disposable ones you know it's crazy yeah the micron again the microns are hard to find in the small fine liner in color That's why I like the Copic because the nibs, uh, I had a set of the silver ones and I can replace the nibs and I can refill them. And they were great, but I can't find them. I gotta look. So, okay. So ice is the first one. I guess I can sign it. That's for tomorrow, so the 22nd. 19. So ice. And then I'll I'll uh, tweak the rest of them. <laughs> Think about it. So that's that. What else can we do? Um, thinking. Oh, yeah, I wanted to try one of these. Thought I would like to try one of these. Let's see what we can make with the uh, colored pencils. Hair. Here's the eyes. Her fur. Da 
dog eyes, long cat fur. I can't see why you couldn't do this in watercolor too, and then use your markers on top of it or a pencil. Settler made a lum, lum, lumo color set, 0.6. Very permanent color set. Just a 0. 0.6 though. They don't come smaller than that. I like a smaller, especially for um, doing what we're doing. I don't like to go over um, a five. Oh, you like it, Judy. I I wasn't really interested in doing watercolor either until I actually tried it and then oh <laughs> it sneaks up on you fabric I'll try some of these. This is cool. The sequence one. Here's the glass, Jean. The bottles. This is good for draw when you're drawing too. If you're drawing something you want to add texture, it's a good reference to go to. That's why I got it. It's endless what you can do with it. You can't do something that's going to take too long. Um, oh, my knees are killing me today. Let's see what, you can try something out of this book again. To try rock, or maybe we should try a where is it? Try the uh, glass jeans here. <laughs> cool. Cobalt and phthalo purple, darkened with Payne's gray. That cobalt and phthalo green. Try this. You want to try this? See you, Debbie. You try this. You get a piece of paper. Get some somewhere. Let's try this one, the green one. Let's see. 
that. Probably won't be able to see though if I don't do it too dark. Your pencil in it. Is that too much of an angle, maybe? Down. And pencil off a bit because of the little, no, oh, that's going to be too much of a slant. Let's see, I'm going to cheat. Grab something. There, like so. Okay. That. All right. Now I'm going to get my watercolor, watercolor, watercolor. Let's see, I need bottle is inked with contour textured lines, then twisted with watercolor wash. Oh, so they did the lines first on this, then tinted with the watercolor washes. All right. So we got to do lines first. Uh, let's see if I have a micron. In, uh, five. There's a three. It seems bigger than that for some reason. Just looking for a small micron. I should have. I see it in here. 
I guess I'll have to use the three then. Five and three. So her lines are sketchy too. So I'm doing this here. Uh, hi, Kia. That's okay. You can always watch the recording. So I know the pencil is black, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, is kind of wonky because of the glass. And then Ooh. these pens are different on the watercolor paper too because they well this is that B paper and it bleeds that's not good hmm oh well let's see what happens Or you could do it in black pencil if you wanted to. But let's try the ink. I like the ink work. So lots of contour lines because of the curve in the bottle. So that's what's giving the uh, the effect of the bottle. This is really good to try and copy because it makes you understand how the lines do what they do. Not going to be the greatest, but that's how you learn. And these should be like like a lot thinner line, but it's good for just starting. Ah, let's see. I won't be using the pen and ink part in this book. We'll be doing detail with my detail. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good book for anything, really. You don't have to use it as a pen book. on what you like to do.
even the way you start <laughs> um, drawing the line makes a difference. Like pressure, how much um, of a blob you want on the end, basically, makes a difference. Closer the lines to further furthest away. Very interesting. I like the look of it though. I think it's so cool. Does give you appreciation of how much you have to um, look at things for this pen, this type of pen work, anyways. Ah, how 
how are the directions in this book? Um, this particular book, it doesn't give you like step by step. Um, very little of it. it. It's just basically telling you like, for instance, it all as it says right here is this bottle was inked with contour texture lines, then tinted with watercolor washes. So it's basically you have to look at it and see how the lines are going. But it tells you what they've done as far as ink and then wash. Um, but they don't tell you to do, say, the sides first or the pencil first or anything like that. So it's kind of a visual, more of a visual uh, book. Um, you should be able to figure out what they're doing, what you need to do. It's just a matter of practice, I think. I'm not sure, you know, it's it's getting used to doing this type of pen work. Um, some artists don't have as much in their pen work. Like this is a lot of pen work. She's basically using um, her pen work to do the shading for her. I still think it's a good book, though. Um, but there is definitely a knack to doing line work the way it should be done. Um, and that's just muscle memory, basically to get used to your hand and and your eye coordinating properly so that you get the right right spacing um, thick or thin line All right, it's not the best, but I think I would definitely like um, different paper maybe than this paper. Okay, enough of that. Because it it does leave it does uh, kind of bleed, so it doesn't give you the greatest line. Yeah, minimal steps, Vaughn. All right, so let's see if we can just do. Where did I put that brush? Or color brush. Mm -hmm. yes. Ow. Okay, 
Now I need cobalt and phthalo green. See if I have that. I'm going to check my list. My, my swatches that I did. <laughs> the rare. Let's see, is it cobalt? There's cobalt light. That might work. What's this one? Cobalt teal. Fail green. Hmm. Windsor Green. Paint Gray. Cobalt Teal. Cobalt. I don't know if I have Thalo Green. Olive Green. Perlene's green. Thalo green. Yeah, thalo green. Hmm. And for blue. Could I use Jean? I don't know if I have thalo green. Black shadow violet. I might have to get some. I have Windsor Green, I have Hooker's Green, I have Permanent Green, Perlene Green, Viridian. I don't even know if I have Viridian. <laughs> I don't see it. Oh. Persian blue. If I could find my swatches, maybe I could figure this out. Let's see. Color this is. There's perlene green. Um, maybe perlene green will be the closest. Mm. Permanent green is kind of bright. I think that'll work. It's kind of the same color as uh, perlene may work, but with some lemon yellow. Okay. All righty. from Kathy hopefully just for a minute okay
All right. Thanks, Janet. This thing I have to get some plant. I'm sure I have. I'm gonna have to look around. I think I'm missing paint. <laughs> okay, so Okay, so I'm, I just mixed the two together, and this is the color I got. So that's good. It's good enough. So, well, let's just, I guess I can darken the areas. in here so it looks like she just does a really quick it's more about the pen work for her I think And it says Payne's Gray. I know I have Payne's Gray. I just saw it. There it is. No, it's Perlene Green. There's Payne's Gray. Just had it out. Payne's Gray. Black. Where did they put it? I know I got it. It says to darken with pain gray. Don't two curly greens. Daniel Smith. I put two of them out for Pete's sake. Okay. Indigo. And thwarp. There, pain's gray. So you just darken it with Payne's Gray. All right, so that area. Here, maybe there. I could do more work in there. In here. All right, and then my pencil. It's just that I 
Oh, that's damn cool. And brown for the eraser, a little bit of brown. Oh, that's kind of a let's put this one here. Sienna, maybe a little bit darker. There we go. And a smidgen of a reflection, probably. What else? I think that's it. All right. That's my <laughs> attempt. <laughs> it's not the best. I need a finer nib. I think. But it's a good try. It's it's interesting to try and do her pen work. Very interesting. Um, and that is going to take practice. So I'm pleased with the first attempt. I think it was a good try. Um, the watercolor part of it is very, very basic, I think. Um, I think you could could have done it the other way around too, where you do the watercolor first and then the pen work. Um, whether that would be easier, I don't know. I think possibly yes, because you aren't um, inclined to do all your shading with your pen. Instead, you'll do more with your ink. Oh, baloney. Yours is in a wreck. Yours is probably good too. Good for the first one. That's what I'm looking at. This isn't the greatest, but it's my first one. And I I think I need I think I need to do the watercolor first for me and do it on maybe it's the paper. Maybe I need to do it on um hot pressed. Because uh, then it wouldn't bleed through so much. Thanks, guys. So it's it, that's interesting, but I'm going to keep these because it's fun to go back and look to see your first attempts and then see your progression along the way. I love doing that. <laughs> It's fun. So I think that's it for me. Um, my puppy's at my feet nudging me right now saying, come on, get off there. I want to go outside and then I want to have my supper. <laughs> She's at 3.30. So she, her little, clock, her little uh, alarm clock's going off. <laughs> But yeah, this is definitely something to work on, and I like doing that. So I will tweet the prompts for the next uh, fib sketch along or sketch a day, and then you guys can start. I've already done my first one. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, guys. It was fun, um, and we'll see you. In 
next Thursday, probably, as long as Jean isn't on. I think Jean said she's going to try for April to get back to um, Thursdays. So whenever she's ready, that'll be good. And then uh, I'll be on and off here and there, um, maybe on the weekend. We'll see. So guys, have a good day, and I uh, will see you in uh, someone else's stream. Probably Vicky's next at 4 o'clock, and then um, Jen this evening, I think. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys.